we wanted to solve this easy one. Sine of x equals uh, negative one half. This is the stuff we did on last section, so this should be a little review for you. And I'll be happy to review. Um, the, the idea went something like this. You, you first graph the sine curve. Um, here's the famous sine curve. Well, one little piece of it. And then you graph, you ask yourself, I want to know when this sine curve is equal to negative a half. So you graph y equals negative a half. Right around here, y is equal to negative one half. And you ask yourself, well, when does it happen? Well, it happens here and here. At those <clears throat> angles right there, we've got exactly, exactly, uh, sine, of a, sine of x. This graph is exactly the same thing as the graph of y equals negative uh, one half. So, so then once you point at these, the next step is to actually um, uh, find them. And, and to find them, you, when it's a famous ratio like this, we, we can, uh, we can uh, figure it out by, by just thinking about it. Uh, here's what you would think. You would think, all right, this is the ratio of opposite to, uh, to hypotenuse. And you know that's, uh, so, so you, we can make a little graph here uh, and for a reference triangle. And you want the opposite to be negative 1. So it'd have to be down here. The opposite couldn't be up here because then it'd be positive. So this would be negative one, and the hypotenuse is two. And, and you know it's, that it happens only once uh, where the a triangle has one of the legs half the hypotenuse, and that's on a thirty sixty. So that guy right there is negative thirty degrees. So so this piece right here, we found the first one is uh, negative thirty degrees. And then using the symmetry of the graph, I'll zoom you in there, so you can see if if this this distance right here, this distance is 30 degrees, and so is this distance right here. That's also got to be 30 degrees. And so, and, and I know this point right here, it, that point right there is 180. That's when sine comes back to zero, so I got to go 180 plus 30 more. So that gives me this one right here, this is uh, 210 degrees. And, and uh, this one I can find because this one's uh, 360 from this one. So so here, here are the solutions. The solutions could be described by <clears throat> saying something like this um, x is equal to let me zoom you out a little bit more x is equal to negative 30 degrees plus any multiple of 360 degrees and that would give you the uphill solutions again this is a review from last time so this is going kind of fast for you uh, you got to go back and redo re-look at the previous video um, then uh, the other solutions the downhill solutions will be given by x equals uh, 210 degrees plus multiples of 360 degrees and this would be a complete list of all possible solutions all possible angles where sine of x equals negative one half and that, that's fine that, that that's what we did last time what we want to do now is take it one step further or just tweak it a little bit we want to know what, what would happen if you start off with a different equation what would happen if you start off with uh, sine of uh, uh, r is equal to negative one half, and, you, and you're sitting there and you think, "Whoa, this one was sine of x equals negative one half," and we got the x solutions. This one over here, sine of r is equal to negative one half. Y you would expect some similarities here, and, and uh, if you're thinking that it should be exactly the same, you're right. The answer would be exactly the same, except you're not solving for x like you were here. You're solving for r, so the the conclusion would be r is equal to negative thirty degrees plus multiples of 360 degrees or r is equal to 210 degrees plus multiples of 360 degrees every one of these r values would work and you think oh that was easy well yeah it was easy because it was exactly the same as well almost exactly the same as the one before the only difference was instead of x we had r you think okay that, that's a pretty easy game to play what if i had sine, sine of something else what if i had sine of, of blah is equal to negative one half. Whoa! How would you solve that one? Well, exactly the same way. If you can do it for x, and you can do it for r, then you can do it for anything. Blah. So the answer here would be that um, blah is equal to negative thirty degrees plus multiples of three hundred and sixty degrees, or um, blah is equal to 210 degrees plus multiples of 360 degrees. That's the idea. And it's still, the story is not complete because you're thinking, blah, what, blah, this, blah, you. No, uh, well, it's because it, I'm, I'm not done with the story yet.
The story goes like this. Suppose you had uh, something like this. Uh, patience. What if you had something like this? Uh, sine of uh, 3x plus uh, 40 degrees is equal to negative 1 half. Haha, -ha, now, now you start to see where the story goes. Because cause you're going to look at this and you're going to be scared if, unless you think about it this way. Hey, it's just a sign of blah. I don't really care what that is. So here, your conclusion should be, just as before, it should be that 3x plus 40 degrees is equal to negative 30 degrees plus multiples of 360 degrees. Or that um, 3x plus 40 degrees is equal to 210 degrees plus multiples of 360 degrees. That's based on the previous work. That's based on here. You should be whenever you see this, you should be thinking. You should be thinking. I'm going to solve uh, sine of blah is equal to negative one half first. That's why this I mean theta or blah, whatever you want. If you think about it that way, and you can solve this easy one, then this one is almost just as easy. Except instead of having theta or x, you have some other quantity. Put that on your solution and proceed. Here, the ultimate goal is to solve for x. So I could add 40 to both sides, or subtract 40 from both sides. And that would give me 3x uh, is equal to negative 70 degrees plus multiples of 360 degrees. Then I could divide everything by 3 to solve for x, and that would give me that x is equal to negative 70 degrees divided by 3 plus multiples of 120 degrees, which is 360 divided by 3. And that would be one family of solutions. And here I'd get the other family from playing some similar game here. Uh, I got I, First of all, I'm going to subtract 40 from both sides. That would give me 170 degrees plus multiples of 360. Just by subtracting 40 from this side and 40 from that side. And then I want to divide everything by 3. That, that would give me 170 degrees divided by 3 plus multiples of 120 degrees. And there you go. That would be a complete, a complete list of... Um, solutions to, to your equation and, and the idea is to you should be able to uh, uh, solve equations like that uh, no problem they should be almost as easy as these type of equations for you okay let's try that one more time with a different problem from beginning to end all right okay so let's try this one this is uh, sort of uh, just something off the top of my head uh, something a little crazy, tangent of some stuff, you should think about this, as tangent of blah equals negative 7. Whenever you see a problem, you think to yourself, this is almost easy. If I didn't have all this stuff here, it would be a really, really easy one. So you set, you can say to yourself, I'll set this aside for a second, and I'll focus on solving this one. Tangent of theta is equal to negative 7. If I can solve this one, this one will be almost as easy. So, so to do this one, we follow the standard procedure here that we've we've outlined in lectures. Is we we draw um, a sketch of the graph, and uh, we we try to find out one of the solutions. Uh, either if it's a famous ratio, we do it by looking at the triangles. If not, we look at, we do it by look, uh, checking the calculator. Here, I'm looking for all the angles where tangent of that angle is equal to negative seven. We'll just say this is y equals negative seven. That would be that angle, that angle, that angle. There's a whole bunch of other ones. Yeah, using our calculator and our tan inverse function, you should be able to get that the, the, the solution here is uh, about negative 81.8 degrees, uh, approximately. Um, I'll just round it off. Theta is approximately 82 degrees. Okay, that that only tells you one of the solutions. That tells you that one. To get the entire family of solutions, you you recognize that the period for tangent is 180 degrees. So this guy will be repeated. Uh, every 180 degrees, so I can add multiples of 180. This covers negative multiples as well. So going forward or that way, every 180 degrees will give you a complete set of solutions. And then you think to yourself, all right, this one over here is almost the same as that one, except instead of having theta, I have this other thing. So so the solution will be, will be like this. It'll be a half x. In essence, what we're doing is just a simple substitution. Um, but it might be easier to see this way. So this will be 82 K, uh, degrees plus multiples of 180. And then the name of the game would be to solve for X. Well, I think um, I meant negative there as well as, as there. Okay, so we will subtract uh, 20 from both sides. So that will give you a half X is equal to negative 100 and 
2 degrees plus multiples of 180 degrees and then you would multiply everything by 2 I would give you x is equal to negative 204 degrees plus multiples of 360 degrees and that, there's your solution uh, well I should say uh, approximately because I rounded off uh, I did some serious rounding off on this one um, and, and there you go that, that's the approximate set of all the solutions they're roughly 204 degrees plus uh, all sorts of multiples of uh, integer multiples of 360 degrees there it is um, this, uh, this one is kinda short this, this lecture is kinda short uh, I think uh, you guys will be will be okay on the homework now. All of them are, are like this, where you have tangent of some other stuff, or, or instead of tangent, you could have sine or cosine. Uh, so you reduce this one to a simple one by by simple substitution, theta, substitute it instead of that. You solve this one the same way you did the ones in the previous section, and then you substitute back whatever you got for theta and solve for x. That's the general strategy. Okay. All right. We'll see you guys here next time. Peace.